بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وأيقنت أنك أنت أرحم الراحمين في موضع العفو والرحمة وأشد المعاقبين في موضع النكال والنقمة وأعظم المتجبرين في موضع الكبرياء والعظمة أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وبه نستعين ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين أما بعد awaited savior of humanity Imam al-Mahdi عليه السلام my respected brothers and sisters السلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته welcome to our sixth discussion in our series commentating on the wonderful du'a du'a al-iftitah which you and I recite every night in the holy month of Ramadan in the previous discussion we are looking at the first main section of Da'a al-Iftitah in which begins وَأَيْقَنْتُ أَنَّكَ أَنْتَ أَرْحَمُ الرَّاحِمِينَ فِي مَوْضِعِ الْعَفْوِ وَالرَّحْمَةِ وَأَشَدُّ الْمُعَاقِبِينَ فِي مَوْضِعِ النَّكَالِ وَالنَّقِمَةِ وَأَعْظَمُ الْمُتَجَبِّرِينَ فِي مَوْضِعِ الْكِبْرِيَاءِ وَالْعَظَمَةِ We looked at the word Yaqeen and how Yaqeen links all these three lines of belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy, in the belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's uh, uh, response to acts of disobedience, and in the belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's omnipotent power in all affairs within life. If you imagine these three come together, this certainty in these three aspects of God's mercy, God's punishment and God's ultimate power to do what he pleases provides us with a holistic way of living life and understanding in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ultimately no avenue of our relationship to him and his relationship to us be it individually or universally and collectively falls outside of the scope of these three particular areas. This discussion inshallah we wish to focus on the second line of those three and the line of the awaited savior alayhi salam where he says وَأَيْقَنْتُ أَنَّكَ أَشَدُّ الْمُعَاقِبِينَ فِي مَوْذِعِ النَّكَالِ وَالنَّقِمَ that I have absolute certainty that you are the most powerful when it comes to the punishment and the affairs of punishment and disciplining of the individual as we've spoken about in previous discussions, there are times when the author السلام, uses synonyms or two words in order to describe a particular issue. As we stated, that is not haphazard. It is very purposeful because each word denotes something specific, something unique, and something very integral to the type of message that is being conveyed within the du'a. In the second line, we say, I have belief in your power in reference to punishment when it comes to issues Both of these are types of punishment. This nikal and naqima are both types of punishment but feature very relative and specific issues when it comes to their own matters of punishment. The first thing is that when it comes to the issue of punishment, there might be two types of punishments. There is the, punish, the punishment for the thing that is done individually, and there is the punishment for that affair which is done socially. Therefore, the punishment is relative to whether the action impacts the individual solely, or whether the punishment occurs to someone who impacts society at large. Thus, the du'a refers to both of them. Now, if we look within the Qur'an, both of them are mentioned in context. And so, if we look within 
Surah Al-Ma'idah, chapter number 5 of the Holy Qur'an, in verse number 38, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the first of them. So here in the dua, nikal is a specific type of punishment. The verse is a very famous one and it says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, وَالسَّارِقُ وَالسَّارِقَةُ فَاقْتَعُوا أَيْدِيَهُمَا جِزَاءٌ بِمَا كَسَبًا نَكَالًا مِنَ اللَّهِ As for the thief, male and female, فَاقْتَعُوا أَيْدِيَهُمَا That you should amputate, cut off their hands. جَزَاءٌ بِمَا كَسَبًا This is a reward for what they have done. Nakalam min Allah, a punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, firstly, as you know, that this is a very specific type of punishment within the penal code system of Islam. And in order for that punishment to be enacted, it requires at least 30 conditions to be present in order for such a punishment to take place. Moreover, we need to understand what is the purpose or the reasoning for cutting the hand? And in fact, as we know, it's not the arm or the, from the elbow or from the wrist. It is specifically from the fingers that are cut. Why is it that this punishment was adjudicated within the Islamic penal code? And what does it have to do with the choice of statement from Imam al-Mahdi alayhi salam in Da'a al-Iftitah? As we know, the punishment that was levied has to have a root within society and be a just punishment in accordance with the act of criminality in particular. So why is it that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala adjudicated for fingers to be cut from the hand? A thief, especially 1400 years ago, had a particular context to it. The majority of trade that was done by the Hijazan community was of very long distance. What was happening was that a individual went on a caravan or sent a caravan to various trade routes across the area in order to purchase things, bring them back into, for example, Mecca and sell them on. So for example, one would collect silk or spices or different types of metal and jewelry and so on and so forth. Now, as we know, travel in that era was much longer than travel took today. If you and I want to go across the world to China in order to do business, this might be a several hour flight or 12 hour or 15 hour flight. Whereas if one wanted to travel even relatively short distances for our period today, 1400 years ago, one might take three or six or 12 months in order to crisscross across the Hijazan community in order to collect these spices or these metals or these silks and then bring them back. Now imagine you've left your family and you've traveled for six months, 12 months, collected what you need to collect, come back and either en route or back at home or in the marketplace, these things that you have gone all the way to collect are stolen from you. As for the thief. This has to be a punishment that is in line with the extent of the problem of the theft. If someone comes and steals today, it is easier to ship that product back within the space of a few hours. Whereas, 1400 years ago, if you stole from someone, this would have been something that you had to spend maybe 9 or 12 months traveling in order to go and get and come back for it. And so the punishment needed to meet the type of crime that was being levied. And so in order to be a just punishment to root out the problem of this type of theft, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said the equivalent for the type of theft that was occurring was to sever off the fingers. Now, what's being said here is that I have absolute belief in you, my Lord, that you are the most severest when it comes to punishment, when it comes to matters of criminality. But it's not just that I am convinced that you are the most severest. This issue of nikal actually denotes justice when it comes to the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the equivalent of the type of criminality that was being performed. My Lord, I have certainty that if you punish me 
or you punish another person, that this will be just in accordance with the type of criminality that I have performed as an individual. In regards to the second word, naqima, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses this elsewhere in the Quran. In chapter number 9, Surah Tawbah, this time in verse number 74, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the people around the Holy Prophet of Islam and he spoke about the internal nature of what they were doing. He says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Yahlifuna billahi ma qalu, wa laqad qalu kalimat al kufr, wa kafaru ba'da islamihim, wa hammu bima lam yanalu. That individuals around the Prophet would take an oath by the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a word of kufr, denying the Holy Prophet of Islam. But after when? Ba'da Islamihim, after their belief in Islam, after their submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَا نَقَمُوا إِلَّا أَنْ أَغْنَاهُمَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ And so, what is being said here is that this was a type of hurt upon the Holy Prophet of Islam by virtue of what they were doing. This refers to a punishment because their actions that they were internalizing came out into their personal natures as individuals. And as a result here, وَمَا نَقَمُوا إِلَّا أَنْ أَغْنَاهُهُمُ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ فَإِنْ يَتُوبُوا يَكُوا خَيْرٌ لَهُمْ But if you were to repent from this action, it would be better for you. What's being said here is that there's two types of punishment. There is the punishment of criminality and there is the punishment of the individual action. There is the punishment that is based upon actions that affect society at large and there is the type of punishment that affects the individual that relates to the internalization and the externalization of those particular actions. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says within the Holy Quran, فَمَن يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَى وَمَن يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ شَرًّا يَرَى Not an atom's weight worth of evil is going to be neglected. It will be shown to you and I. And therefore, my certainty is, my Lord, that you will punish criminality actions that occurs within society and those actions that may affect me internally. I am certain that you will punish in those matters. But if and when you do, they will be just punishments and I am absolutely certain in these punishments. And those when it comes to my internal nature, I would not go towards those actions because I know that that punishment is due, that punishment is coming and that punishment is severe but relative and just to the type of criminality that has occurred. If I knew this, and I'm certain in it, I wouldn't go towards it in the first place. And this is what the du'a seeks to be able to teach me, that when I'm reciting it, I learn these particular matters about the severity of the punishment and the reality of it upon me. Insha'Allah, as we recite the du'a, we will manifest these ideas and manifest this feeling through our recitation of it. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Usalli Ya Rabbi Ala Muhammad wa Alihi Tahir.